Do you do you read webtoons? Oh yeah, I read webtoons. As as like an art form, what do you think of webtoons? Like, because it's like a whole different culture, right? It's not really like um, manga or comics, where you where it's like those were paper formats where you read a certain way and then you flip the page over. But webtoons, mm -hmm. it feel as far as I know, originated. It's native for online viewing. So yeah, yeah. So I just found like like the transitions so smooth. Oh yeah, because they can. Um, what's the word? They can um, utilize vertical space, and it's a continuous vertical space as opposed to this is a page and then it's the next page. And then, like you know, in traditional manga, the only way they can do that if they have two pages like this, mm. like a centerfold type situation where it's like, oh, like, like you know, left if you're going from your, I don't know if it's mirror, but like left to right kind of thing, right? Whereas webtoons, you're just like, wow, this is a crazy. And like sometimes, you know, they'll like you know do things sideways just to make the point of like this is a really long thing. But um, yeah, no, I like, I like, yeah, I like webtoons. I think they're pretty good. What's do you have some favorite ones? Uh, see, my favorite ones are always like real stupid, like romance ones. <laughs> you know, like that, like you know, like um, like university love triangle, like that sort of <laughs> shit. Like, those are my favorite. Those are definitely my favorite because I like pretty ones, and like, I don't really like care for like ones that are like too actiony. I think, uh. You know the one that I said that you should read and you were like, nah, it's too much. I was like, okay. Which one? Hasala? Huh? Hasala? No, I don't remember. You never sent me that one. Oh, I recommended it to you and you were like, nah, it's too much. And I was like, oh, okay. No. Okay, I sent I'll it to what, What's it about? What's it, why'd you send me that one? Uh, because it's not like I'm going to go and recommend you, like, you know, um, romance ones that are you know, very like, oh my God, like, will they, won't they? Like, ah, like, oh, there's another man. Ah, like, you know, it's not like I'm going to recommend you those ones. It's about like a dystopian future where you, if you do a good thing, you collect points. And then once you collect enough points, you have the license to kill, I think. Mm. What? Okay, no, that sounds pretty good. I, don't remember maybe i just didn't like the art or something but i'll have another look it's no the awesome. art was fun. the art was good because i the reason i don't usually like because the thing about webtoons is that i feel like because the turnaround is so tight mm. a lot of artists don't have the time to make mm. it look as good as they want to i guess because yeah. it's a weekly and, weekly release right? yeah, yeah yeah exactly so like a lot of the webtoons um that with like a higher quality of picture i guess is like real simple mm. and sometimes you know it's it's it do be like that sometimes mm. it do be like that sometimes but like you know whereas things like um mm -hmm. yes though no, that like they're like not super hard to put together because yeah. it's so simple when he yeah. ever has like five characters in it maximum yeah you know i i do i do read some kind of romance you know i read i'm pretty sure i'm caught up with like Yoshin Kangnim. Oh, I love that one so much. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm just annoyed because because I just want her to be happy with fucking. Um, I just want her and Sojun to be happy. You but know, you're, you're not Suhopa. Yeah, so she's okay, but like Sojun is like Jin, like yeah, <laughs> like hundred percent. And like you know, what's her name? Su's sister. She's all like oh. Every time she like sees like an opportunity for them to get together, she's like, Ooh. And it's like, <laughs> like, I know exactly what you're gonna do, yeah. you bitch. Yeah, yeah, that actually that's one of the best parts about webtoons is like reading the comments afterwards. Do you read comments? Oh my god, yeah, the comments is, the comment section in webtoons are so good. <laughs> oh man, and it's it's so funny, like with, with the romance ones because the because they take sides. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, and it's like an extra bonus round of entertainment. And then people pick up details sometimes that you didn't notice when you're reading it, and then you go back and read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the part. 
I like that it's pretty, I, li- I like that it's accessible and I like that it's like, um, you don't, like for instance, like when I get up in the morning, I'll read all of the webtoons that are released that day. And sometimes it's like eight different series, but like, and like, it's so digestible because mm-hmm. it's so short, but then sometimes I like to save them up, you know, mm-hmm. and like, yeah. like 10 episodes all at once, yeah. you know, <laughs> and then like sometimes I'll be like, this is too patience for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but also sometimes I'm like, this is not fun. It's not, nothing's happening fast enough. So I just won't read it for like a, a, quite a while. And then I'll go back to it. And all of a sudden I have like 10 episodes to bash through. Mm. And it's like, oh, okay, sweet. Now I'm going to get some story. Like, nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, honestly, like some relaxed time with some music and like 20 saved up chat, like a new webtoon that you haven't discovered uh, before. You- that you just found and you're just like you see yeah. like the and then there's like 30 chapters and you're like ah! it's such a good it's a good time it's and you you spend like a good i spent like a good hour reading webtoons before you know just chilling in my right. room yeah. yeah i mean that's what again that's what i do in the morning sometimes it's like sometimes i'll just like on the weekend if i have nothing to do i'll just be like sweet i'll just read a bunch of webtoons some people um, are probably super confused how would you describe a webtoon for someone who has never seen one or heard of like what what a webtoon is uh short cartoons slash comics on the web (laughs) and it's it's usually korean i haven't seen oh there's like some chinese webtoons out there yeah definitely but i only know of them because someone has found a good Chinese webtoon and then translated all of it into Korean mm. and they'll upload on a weekly basis. Like um, there's one called like here you are, which is uh, here, here you are. Yeah. I think that's what it's called and it's Chinese, um, but it's on neighbor, I think. And yeah. <laughs> so, they do be like that sometimes. I also feel like the business model is quite like it's it's it strikes the balance of yeah I get it they need to earn money and also this is kind of fair. What do you mean? I don't understand. Because the way the webtoons work, like I, as far as I, I I understand it as a consumer, right, is when the chapters are coming out, it's free, right? So um, you don't have to buy new releases, right? First of uh-huh. all. Um, you can read the new chapters weekly, right? And the ways that you have to pay is a, there's always like three or four chapters that you can like pay for that are, oh. that they've already made and you can see yeah. it's like unlockable, right? Yeah. But if you wait a week, you can read it. Right. Yeah. Free, right. So it's kind of like, if you, if, you know, if you really, really just need to know and scratch the edge, you can pay you know, like what, $2 or whatever, yeah. read that next chapter. So that's the first way you can, you can kind of pay. And the second way is when the webtoon kind of finishes or like a season finishes, right? And after a certain time, they lock all of it, right? And then you kind of have to pay for it, right? Mm-hmm. So if you miss the chance um, to read it as it's coming out and you want to try read it later, like a year later, um, then you have to pay for it to read. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, yeah, you can get it um, for free. And if you have the patience, y- you can just read the whole thing for free. But if you want to mm-hmm. read it again, you know, if you want to read it again after a while or... If you like it so much. Yeah, yeah. Or like some of them just kind of um, develop like a legendary status, you know, over time and mm-hmm. people keep recommending it. and so. When that happens, you have to go back, find it, and pay for it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I, I think it's like, I think that's fair, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that sounds, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I don't see why that wouldn't be fair. Are you saying, like, there should be, like, a popcorn time for net webtoons? No, I, I mean, like, 
with manga, right? I've been reading manga since probably when I was 15. Before, before that, I probably read the paper, you know, version. Yeah, you Pokemon I one. probably read 80% plus of, no, more than that, 90% plus of my manga stories on the web. Yeah. And probably 99% of that I've read for free, you know? When and have you paid for it? I'm sure I've paid for something. I'm sure. Um, and because uh, that's that whole thing where um, with Japanese manga, they, they come out and they, um, they struggle because the English trans translation doesn't come out fast enough to do, um, what is it? Um, through the, the official channels, you know, it takes ages you know, for they release the volume and then like a year later it gets translated into English. So there are people like scanlation groups who take the weekly ones that come out of Japan, scan it, right? Redraw everything. They optimize everything um, and make everything clean. And then they translate it. And the turnaround time is like a weekend, mm -hmm. right? So, and they put it up for free, right? So obviously this is really bad for, um, in some ways, um, because it's kind of like you're, um, you know, you're, you're, you're downloading free music, right? So um, the, the money that the publishing company in Japan could have gotten, maybe, um, they're not getting. And they get angry and they always try to take down scanlation groups, blah, blah, blah. But webtoons don't seem to have that problem, like, at all. Is, is, is my point. I'm not 100% registering what you're trying to say. Yeah. I'm just saying Webtoon seems like much more of a modern, like, uh, modern and workable business model that well, yeah, I'm and happy with. I mean, it's, and like, it's already digital, you know, so you don't have to scan shit, you yeah. know? Yeah. You just, you can screenshot it and it'll be the same, like, you know, aspect ratio and like the resolution as it once was mm. right most of the time okay? and they're much shorter like each episode is only what like maybe like eight beats or something yeah and there's no there's no real pirating because it's already like free yeah you know? most of it anyways mm. um and i think it also makes it super accessible for more artists to like i think it's way more competitive and I think there's like a democratic element of it, which is really interesting. Where, oh, yeah. Yeah, where like the, the webtoons that stay on the main websites, like Naver and Daum and stuff, um, they're the ones that people consistently view. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. I don't know about business model, but I've not actually thought about it that far. So <laughs> I read them. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a blind consumer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's crazy because like, it's like some experiences you can pay, you know, like a concert, for example, you'd pay, you know, upwards of two, three hundred dollars sometimes. Which, what kind of concerts are you going to? Are they dead? Uh, no. <laughs> Why? Like for decent okay. seats, for decent seats. And then you get like maybe what, three, four hours of entertainment. You well, know. who's on the lineup? Prince? Like Queen? Like the original band members? Who, who's on the lineup? Like, well, why are you, are you saying that you don't pay two, three hundred dollars for a concert? Maybe the problem is that the concerts that cost two to three hundred dollars don't come to Wellington. <laughs> like, yeah. that's what it is? I don't know. The most I've ever paid for a concert was like... I paid ninety dollars for a concert once. What? Well, you get you must like. Well, you get a lot of tickets for free. I know, because <laughs> you. Um... I mean, yeah. <laughs> What's the best live performance that you've ever seen? The best live performance. Oh man, that's hard. That's What's really in your top. Well, yeah, what came to mind? What's in like your top two? Oh, crap. Um. Well, I mean. And why? That's so hard. 
I do, I do like going to music festivals. And so those tickets are like, maybe like, I think they were like $300, but it's like three full days of music. So again, if you break that down into like how many people I saw during that time, it's like easily like, you know, $30 per stage kind of thing. Right. Um, Okay, so, but what popped into my mind actually was I, I really like My Chemical Romance. That was my first ever concert. Wow, okay. I wasn't yeah, expecting that. Have, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Wait, I that think that was I, your first ever concert? Like proper, like yeah. stadium, like arena type concert. And I went with our cousin Nayang. Yeah. I think so. I must have been maybe like 16 or 17 at the time, probably 16, maybe even 15. And we went together and it was so good. And they had like fireballs and shit coming off the stage. And we're like, ah, like it was crazy. Yeah. That was really good. Um, uh, but I guess I, that was like, that has a special place in your heart because it was like the first one you went to. And, and fire. Like, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, sure. You can get much more than fireballs these days, but still it was pretty cool. Like, you know, if like, you know, you're in high school, you don't know shit. You go and go into town with your cousin for like, the, one of the very first times that you're allowed to go on your own kind of thing. Yeah. Fucking butler to people. <laughs> and like, I, and I, I remember I, that, that album, Welcome to the, uh, the Black Parade, that album, I still listen to, you know, start to finish, including the bonus track, start to finish, no stopping. And I know all the words, you know? So that was, that like the music itself and like the actual concert, it does have a special place in my heart. You're right. You're right. Um, another concert that I went to, I enjoyed was free because it was like a free, it was straight up a free concert. That was um, Tuxedo, which is, oh crap. What are the names? Oh shit. They're real famous. Tuxedo. Who's in them? Um, a DJ and Mayor Hawthorne. What's his name? I can't remember the DJ's name. I'm sorry if you ever see that. But um, yeah, Tuxedo was really good. Um, and then otherwise, um, well, I went... So why was that one... Uh, why do you think that one kind of stuck in your mind as like one of the best ones that you've seen? Because I like their music so much. Like, I mean, there's not a way around it. If I really enjoy the music, there's no reason for me to not like the concert. Um, and if I really enjoy their music the only reason that it would be a bad experience is if something happens, like a, like a random event, like happens to me, like, you know, someone spills their drink on me and it's a red wine and I'm wearing wine. It's like, Oh fuck. Like my night was ruined, but that's cool. Um, or if like, you know, the sound quality is like really shit, which has happened before. Um, so yeah, my chemical romance tuxedo is up there. Um, Oh, I saw the, I went to see D'Angelo once and that was really good but I was really drunk. So I don't know if I truly enjoyed it, you know? <laughs> it was enhanced. It. Huh? It was enhanced in a way. Yeah. Enhanced. And then um, I went to a music festival earlier this year, the one that I mentioned before. That was really good. That was really, really good. I want to go again next year. That's how good. Oh, so good. <laughs> what, what was good about it? You just like the songs. Like what was, because... How many concerts do you think you've been in in your lifetime? You've been oh, God, a lot. Like, but I mean, but I guess it depends. Like, what do you call a concert? You know, does it have to be in an arena or a stadium? No, no any or, kind of live music. Any kind of live music. I well, then you know, when I worked at the um, Southern Cross, mm. there was essentially live music. One, two, three, at least three times a week. Wow every week for years yeah so you've seen so, a lot of shows i mean yeah i've seen a lot of shows H have you seen shows so and, and i'm guessing let me know if i'm wrong like have you seen shows that are like the full range of how good a show can be in terms of like wild and the crowd loves it and like average people like it but people not paying that much attention sometimes but generally like it's good it's a good vibe all the way to like people bombing in one show no 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 oh right yeah oh absolutely yeah for sure for sure 
like I've, especially yeah go on you've never been like i mean yeah because sometimes i would be working during the show and a part of my job would be to watch the crowd yeah. and it's like wow they really don't care for this like yeah. i may as well put some like put like the regular like the house music on and be yeah. and people would be dancing like you know what have you noticed have you noticed anything and and in all your kind of experiences in terms of like people's general taste of music like patterns um what kind of um yeah what, what kind of shows are successful more successful than others i think i mean of course at the core of it you have to have good music and then i think the next layer after that is having um not necessarily a big fan base but like some amount of fan base you know mm. okay yeah because i mean all but having said that i have heard like very very like ext- like just new bands straight off the bat come in mm. and they've done a really good job kind of thing um sorry what was the question uh, I'm, i was I'm wondering just- if, you, if you've noticed any patterns in people's I guess it's a combination of the quality of the band and the music and mm-hmm. people's taste in music in general. Yeah, that too. And it's kind of like, I mean, obviously if you're say like a band, if you're a musical act and you're performing live, mm-hmm. then you walk in with a set list, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and of course it's very difficult to change that set list because this is what you practice and this is what you're going to do on that day. Um, but you also we have to be able to like read the room kind of thing in a way because hmm. you would have to um, actually one of my uh, I'm just thinking back one of my favorite um, live performances was you know my friends the ones that I always talk about that have a band and they're doing really well um, yeah they did a show what are they called you should plug them <laughs> the two of I they're great um, no honestly I don't listen to like um, I uh, no, I, I was just going to say that I don't l- listen to like a large variety of music, but that's not true because I do. But like, I like, oh God, that's just so good. And like, they just know how to interact with mm. the crowd, you know? Um, yeah, no, Tunes of Vibe, have a listen. And even like, I reckon even if you don't like their music, like a hundred percent because you know, different folks, different strokes kind of thing. If they're in town and they're having a gig, like a hundred percent go because they are such a fun group. Mm. And like, you know, they interact really well with each other on stage and they interact really well with the crowd. And that just helps a lot for sure. Mm. And yeah, I just have a great time every time I go see them. That's what I'm talking about, right? Like there's things that an artist can do in a live performance. (laughs) that they can't do well it's it's different from hearing their music that's already been recorded uh uh-huh, yeah for sure yeah and i'm just trying to s- understand like you know when people say oh they're actually they're all right live or like oh man they're way better live right and, and i'm tra- just trying to understand what makes those different kind of reactions happen like right Like, I mean, okay, let's take Tunes of I for an example. They're really good, like, in terms of, like, their recorded music. Like, on their records, they're really good. And live, they're even better. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I mean, but even better in a different way, in a different way. Like, oh, they're just so fun, you know? Like, and it's, it's really enjoyable as someone in the audience to be able to see that they're also having fun. You know, they don't take themselves too seriously. Um, they do this thing. Oh my goodness. I don't know if they, nah, they won't mind. None of them will listen to this. <laughs> um, they do this thing where, um, you know how like in a band, everyone has their like solo moment, like, you know, like, oh, it's like, you know, it's the lead guitarist and it's going to rip it for like, you know, what a, like a minute or whatever. Um, and then like there's like a bass solo and they have like a horn section. So like the sux- uh, the saxophonist and like the um, trombonist will have like a solo and shit. 
But every time the drummer has a solo, a drum solo, everyone else in the band on stage, like, like crouches down, like sits down, right? And until the entire room crouches down to the floor, the drum solo will continue. <laughs> what? Yeah. So, like, the last time I saw them live, it was at, um, it was at this bar down in Lyle Bay. It was at Parrot Dog. And that drum solo went on for so long that I was, like, on the ground. And I was messaging the lead singer being like, I feel so bad for him right now because he's been going for like a straight, like five minutes, just <laughs> on the skins. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of those kind of fun things that you notice about them. And, and they're just really fun. Yeah. Really fun. So there's like this reading the room and interacting, interactions. And another thing that you said was, um, I can't remember. You said you said something else. Oh, not taking themselves too seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you know, intra band relations. Because mm. like it? you're you're right. Because like um, one of the concerts that come to mind in this conversation for me, not in particularly a good way, is Nora Jones. Okay. I, I, I you know I've listened. I I really like her um, albums. Obviously, it's relaxing. You know come at me, whatever, um, each to their own. Um, and uh, when I saw her live, she basically sounded exactly like her records. And she right. didn't do anything really beyond that at all. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like, it was like, oh, live sound quality, it's good. And I can say that I've been to the concert. But, yeah, it's, it wasn't, yeah, it was just like, just, you know, listening is really really similar to listening to a CD. The main highlights for me that night was actually the act of, oh, meeting up with friends um, and getting right. prepared to go to a show and having dinner before that and going together and be having that shared experience. Enjoyed the pre-show and enjoyed the show. Eh? I mean, I don't know. That, I, I'm not a big, I'm not a huge fan of Nora Jones. Like, sorry, Nora. Um, like, I'm not a huge fan of her. So, like, I don't know what to tell you other than like. No, that's I what thought... I mean, right? Like she didn't. It's it's kind of like how Jordan Peterson talks about um, uh, lecture lecturing and public speaking, right? And that right. for him, um, when you when you are in a conversation with a crowd, right? It is exactly that. It's a conversation, right? He's talking mm -hmm. to someone in in the crowd, and he's feeding off their reactions. And he's actually taking the lecture in directions which he doesn't know where exactly where he'll end up. Almost like he kind of, it's kind of like a circus performer, um, you know, who's, who's going across a line or something, right? And there are performances where you feel like the safety net is there under the thing. <laughs> and there are performances where you, where you think, where you feel that there's no safety net. Right, yeah. You know, and for me, um, Nora's performance, although like sonically everything was really polished, um, there was like, there was zero interaction. It just felt like, you know, she came out, did exactly, um, you know, what she practiced and what she'd done for many, many years and honed in and dialed in um, and then went, went back in. Whereas the other concert that comes to mind is obviously the John Mayer concert. Um, and this happened, I was in Christchurch for the shootings, right? Oh yeah, you were. Yeah, I was in Christchurch for the shootings. It was a weird ass time, right? And right after I came back, like either on the day or two days later, um, after I came back from the shootings to Auckland, um, that's where the concert was, right? Mm-hmm. And the concert opened with um, John Mayer, a Kapahaka group, um, and this, I can't, remem I can't remember the name of this um, Maori kind of opera kind of singer. And like, it opened with such a sensitive kind of message and a tribute to what's gone down. Like he didn't say anything about it specifically, but 
the the songs that he decided to cover weren't his songs. It was um, uh, it was other songs, and it kind of like, you know, instantly he turned it into like a candlelight, like everyone on waving their phones, like it was, right. Yeah, it was. You know, I, I saw several people crying, kind of shit. Right. He started with that, and then there was like a whole full um, you know, um, haka, um, like right at the beginning after the those few songs, and then when and then he went into his sets. And he kind of, he kind of talks through. Um, I remember him kind of talking to the mic, but with the band at times about what he's thinking and what he might do next, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I also remember him kind of just talking about the thought process he's going through on stage. What it, that's what it felt like, right? He's going to play the song, and this is kind of what, you know. Um, why he wants to play this and why he feels like this and the time of his life when he wrote this kind of thing. And it didn't feel scripted at all. Um, and it kind of felt like a conversation with the crowd. Mm -hmm. you know? um, yeah, so those are kind of like my two contrasting um, experiences. And then there are raves, which is like... Which you don't get, do you? I don't, I don't get it, man. You know, yeah, I, 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 I don't I get think it. you don't get it because I think that you think you don't know how to dance well. I think that's where that comes from. Because remember when we had that, had that conversation about like, well, you know, you went to like a, a bar or like a whatever you went to and then your friends are there and you're like, oh yeah, I'll meet you guys there. And then you get there and you're at the bar and you turn around and you see the dance floor and you see all of these people having a great time and you think to yourself, I want to have a great time too. So I'm going to go do and emulate what they're doing because that sure looks fun. And then you did it. You did do what they were doing, but it wasn't fun for you. No. Right. That's what it is. Of course you don't like raves because you don't, I, I don't know if you like, go to them because you want to like them or because you want to be there because I want to be there. I definitely, I a hundred percent want to be there. Um, actually I've been spending like not a lot of money, but, uh, I've had to pay for a couple of things. Um, a couple of luxuries in my life. And recently I've had two tabs open on my browser and, uh, actually three tabs open on my browser and they're all concert like, and they're all like for gigs. One's like a really small gig. Um, and it's fifteen dollars, and it's a rave. Well, not a rave, but it's like a like a DJ set kind of thing. Um, and then the second one is a band that I really want to see because I really enjoy their music. But like, I thought the tickets were gonna be like twenty dollars, but they're actually thirty dollars. And I'm like, do I really want to give them this much money? Because like they're playing at a really small venue and everything. Like, I don't know. I might go for. It. I'll listen to their new album that they're on, like the promo tour. For. If it's good, I'll go. Um, but at the same time, I kind of don't want to listen to the album before I go because I want to be surprised by what they have because I've listened to the single without the album. Um, and then the third gig is a rave. And it was like $80 for a ticket. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, I don't want to pay $80 to go to a rave right now, you know? Um, but anyway, no, you want to have to go to a rave to really enjoy it. Because mm. it's one of those scenes where... For me, at least, I'm not going to go because my friends are going. I'm going to go because I want I want to go and dance and do a whole bunch of drugs and just go off, you know? If, if you had to, well, if you had to kind of, uh, <laughs> what's the right word? Uh, mentor someone uh, and to get, help them enjoy their first rave experience. Right. Right. Well, how might you, how might you kind of do that? Well, first well, of all, the key things, yeah. Uh, the key things, the key things is, um, I guess if they want to go to a rave, oh, like, ugh, listen, here's the thing again, like, so, okay. So if say I had someone that wanted to go to this rave and they were like, Hey, are you going to this? Because I've been thinking about going to it but I wasn't sure. But if you were going to it, I thought I might go with you, but it's also my first rave. Is that the situation? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, 
I'm not a pusher. And this is going to sound like I am a pusher. <laughs> but first of all, I would need to organize some drugs. At least for myself. I don't know. Um, and then the other thing is I guess like maybe set their expectations straight because like, A, it's going to be loud. B, there's going to be a lot of people. And C, it's going to be one kind of music the whole time. Pretty, like most always, you know? Um, and like, I don't know. I, I guess like I probably like if I really wanted them to make like make sure that they had if i really wanted to make sure that they had a good time i would probably like you know in the days coming get them to like you know like listen to the kind of music that they might have there with them and to see what their reaction is but not in a way of like oh do you want to listen to this like let me just put this on tell me what you think about this not kind of that way but just put it on in the background see how they like feel kind of thing um i don't know i honestly don't have much advice because my first rave that I went to, I knew exactly what they were going to like. I knew exactly what kind of music it was going to be. I had already sussed out my own drugs and a bunch of my friends going, but were going. So I bought tickets. I went and I had a great time. Mm. So I guess, again, point, point is you have to want to be there. Like if you took me to like a job, if you took me to a Nora Jones like concert, I don't care how sonically good and like tidy her set was. I'll probably be like, yeah, it was good. It's Nora Jones. I, I can't complain, but at the same time, I don't know if this was a good use of my money mm. kind of thing, you know? Mm. Actually, this is something that I want to ask you about. Uh, it's still to do with music because it's really difficult to re recommend people music. Mm -hmm. And I find that you do it consistently well. Right. Um, is, is, is there, yeah, what kind of goes, what kind of happens in your brain to kind of help you recommend a piece of music to someone? Um, also, do you, do you think, do you think like there's like a relate, do you find that there's a relationship between um, people's personalities and the genres of music that they like? Oh, no way. I used to think so. I used to think that way hard, but no way. Like in a way, yes, but mostly no, because some people will listen. Like the um, executive VFX producer at my work, first of all, likes really rough, like nice, like 80s to early 2000s, like gangster rap. But he also really likes like hardcore, like death metal, like black metal, like that sort of shit. So, and I always thought he was like Nora Jones, to be honest with you. I, I always thought he was like a pretty like, uh, you know, easy going dude, but you can never tell. And like, plus like for me, like um, sometimes people will be like, oh, like Hannah, I didn't know you like that kind of shit. And I'd be like, why not is it because the way I, because of the way i look is it because of the way i talk is it because of the way i dress like why do you think like first of all like it's cool that i'm like you know pushing the boundaries of your image of me i mean i always want to challenge that shit um <laughs> But at the same time, it's kind of like, oh, what? So you think I only listen to like lo-fi hip hop all the time? Because that's not true. I listen to fucking show tunes when I want. And I'll listen to, and I'll listen to again, My Chemical Romance, like whenever I want, you know, like. Yeah. T tangent. Why do you think it, be, it drives people crazy to be put in a box? You know, like in the in the way that you're describing you know oh right um i mean i can't speak for anybody else but i think Cause it's, a, it's a consistent experience you know like when someone asks me oh are you from korea like you know like as if they already know that i'm from korea or like some part of asia i'm like no i was born in australia you know that's uh, like the love I love, I think that's kind of where it comes from for me at least. Cause I'm like, Oh, people are like, Oh, where are you from? I'm like, have a guess. And they'll be like, mm, China. And I'm like, no. And 
uh, Vietnam, no, Japan, no. Where's where are you from? I'll be like, well, you know, I grew up here. Like, or uh, actually, like the. Okay, so people are like, where are you from? I'll be like, well, I've been in Wellington for like close to 10 years. And they'll be like, no, 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 where are you really from? Well, I, I grew up in Auckland. No, 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 but like, where were you born? Melbourne. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, like, big represent, you know, all that. And they're like, oh, so, but you, where, where, where are your parents from? I'm like, well, they're Korean. Like, in terms of heritage, I'm Korean. And they're yeah. like, oh, okay, that's what I was trying to, like, ask. And I'm like, in my, in my head, I'm like, why does that matter? Like, sh- surely it, it matters where I'm from, but it also matters where I'm going. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think it, I think it um, depends on the person for sure. But as far as I go, I like people to expect the unexpected with me. And I like to expect the unexpected with others, you know? And I think challenging um people's perspective is really important obviously not to the point of like you know complete alienation (laughs) but um as far as i go i don't like being put in the box because i don't think there is a box that can contain me (laughs) i don't know (laughs) Is that fair? Is this getting too metaphorical? I don't know. Um, <laughs> That's a pretty basic metaphor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, but like you know, some people will still put me in a box, and in their mind, if they put me in a box, that's great. Like, that's fine because I'm not actually in a box. <laughs> but it's like, I feel it's a universal thing. There's like nothing more infur- infuriating than having someone express verbally that like uh express that they know everything about you and what you're thinking and what you're about you know oh oh yeah you're gonna go home and put on your chemex and uh you know listen to this and you know watch the show and go to bed you know like when they talk you know even if it's right you're like fuck off you don't know me you know, <laughs> like it's it's never it's so infuriating um and uh, um I don't know like it's it's it depends on the person because I mean I think it's like it also depends on the way that that information is verbally presented Mm. like you know for instance like if someone's like oh yeah you're gonna go home and like you know put on some pajamas like bash some you know what's the word I'm looking for bash some pedestrian ass tv show for hours and eat some popcorn is that what you're gonna do and I'm like you know I am gonna do exactly this I love (laughs) <laughs> you know, um, I guess it kind of is least, well, it's not well received when the box that they're putting you in is not how you see yourself or at the least how you want to see yourself. Mm. Because surely that level of disarray is what's like, you know, people are like, oh, you're Korean, you know. And it's like, yeah, I know I'm Korean, but I have a problem with this on the inside because I want to distance myself from that image, right? It's probably that, um, what's the word? I can't, my brain isn't working for words today. It's probably that discrepancy of how you see yourself to how they see you that you're like, oh, like, I'm not just Korean, you know? (laughs) Oh, you're a designer. Oh, like, (laughs) you... (laughs) You're a hip. You like hipster shit. You like all the handcrafted. Uh, <laughs> How many pair of hand, do you uh, own? <laughs> oh, you take photos of your food. Oh, you're that kind of person. Anyways, um, what what did you learn? Uh, what did you learn studying psychology at university? Uh, I learned how to get in, do a thing, get out. Like, I, I learned how to, like, go in, complete the tasks, and leave as fast as I can. But fully complete the tasks. Do you know what I mean? Can you expand on that? <laughs> well, because I didn't like going to university. I, I didn't like studying. I mean, not studying, but, like, 
I didn't like having to be there and having to pay out of my own pocket for something. I didn't see like a huge deal of a future slash like interest in, you know, mm. cause like, I mean, like, and I don't regret it because it, like, it, it's good for like CDs <laughs> and it's, <laughs> no, I mean like, yeah, it's like, oh, she's university educated. That must mean she's good for something. Right. You know? So in terms of like, you know, where I am at my life now, I'm like, yes, it was useful. But in terms of like the actual bits of in, like actual information that I gathered from it, other than um, being able to write like at that level of um, academia, is that the word I'm looking for? Um, and then obviously there's like, you know, specific like studying, like study related skills that I learned. But as far as like, um, information goes i think i sort of clocked out maybe like halfway in i was just like oh, i'm in too deep to get out i'll just do it i'll just do it you know what did you not like about it um well i didn't like the university culture first of all and Which parts uh it was mostly i think it was kind of like a like the social aspect you know um, I like, um, uh, I mean, as far as studying goes, I like doing things on my own and, and like kind of similar for work as much as I like, you know, I don't like forced group projects and I don't like having to talk to the person next to me that I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just a bitch. <laughs> no. Um, no, I just didn't like the social aspect of it in the sense that you, A, had to interact with people that you didn't want to interact with, um, and also, B, um, all the people that I did interact with were fucking assholes. No, I'm joking. Um, so, A, all the people that I had to interact with, I didn't want to interact with, and B, I think on, like, a personal social life level, I was not having a great time. I was like, this is bullshit. Like, I don't like any of you. I don't even know why I'm hanging out with any of you. And I can't believe I just like ditched class to do this with you motherfuckers. Like what the fuck is wrong with me? Like I kind of was going through like a troubling time at the time, like, you know, mm -hmm. at that stage in my life. And so a lot of it, I'm just like, it's done. I, I don't ever have to think about this ever again, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but skills wise, I learned a lot. So that's great. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Cause um, basically you're describing like, well, <laughs> Uh, meeting people you don't know and having to work with people that you potentially don't like. That's like, oh man. It's not even potentially don't like. I feel like a lot of the time, like this is something that's like not good for me, I guess. If I'm not like 100% into it, like into whatever activity is about to go down, my um, social gauge for uh, uh just my gauge for social appetite mm -hmm. it just drops it just goes below zero and i mm, i don't know i just maybe i don't like meeting new people maybe that's what it is <laughs> maybe i'm just a, a close close-minded fool like I, I it's hard to describe because again like i didn't really like the situation that i was in at the time and so a lot of the time it'd be like, oh, you have to pair up with someone or like, this is a group project. And I'm just like, immediately, I don't want to fucking do this, but I'll do it. I'll do it. But also like, fuck everyone. Like, you know, how um, do you think, how do you think, uh, that experience could be different? Um, I think if I didn't go <laughs> to university, I might've used my time more wisely, I guess. No, but, but I mean, you know. Yeah. Having said, like, I mean, I can't say that I, like, shouldn't have gone or that I wish I didn't go because then I wouldn't be where I am now. And I can't really imagine where else I would be had I done anything differently because so many things have happened since then. Like, so many forks in the road, many forks in the road since then. Like, I don't really... I've kind of given up spending time 
I've kind of given up on spending time about thinking about what could have gone down if I had taken a certain path at any given point in my life, because the fact is you didn't. And so you'll never know. And currently I'm faced with, you know, mul like multiple forks in my life. And I need to focus on that mm. instead of being like, oh, but like, you know, years ago, what would have happened if I decided to not go to university at all? Like, you know, like I, it's, it's, I, I mean, it's good. Like, it's good to look back on things and think about your life and how you've come, like, uh, you know, how you ended up here. But I have more pressing matters than to think about my regrets. I think. Yeah. Is that the is that the answer you were looking for? I don't know. It's better than the answer I was looking for because the the, quit, the the answer that I was trying to get you to think about was how could the teaching be different? Oh right. But, oh. Yeah, that was a good fit. So I, I I don't regret asking that question. And plus, I can still ask that question. Um, yeah. Do you think the the teaching at university could be different? Could have been different? Um, like, or if you were kind of trying to teach the same similar learning outcomes um, to, you know, students coming in? You know, I can't, I don't know. I, first of all, I'm not qualified to comment on that. That's, that's the very most important thing. So whatever. That's not really true. Well, no, you're, because, you're the customer in a way, right? Right. In a restaurant. But yeah. it's kind of like I'm a customer. It's kind of like, um, if you were a kid, right? You're a kid and your parents are like, we're gonna go out for dinner. And you're like, yeah, okay. And then they keep to take you some, to some place that you didn't wanna go in the first place. And they get you to order something that you didn't really wanna eat, but it's what they have. And then afterwards you walk out of the, and, and you go there and you're like, I, I, I don't even, I don't know, like, you know, there's a bunch of adults here. They're all my family, but I don't know what they're talking about. I've just been giving this food out. I guess I'll eat it because otherwise I'll starve to death. Um, there's a, there's the, the, the best part is when you get the ice cream at the end for dessert because the adults are still talking. They're like, oh, we'll get, we'll get the kids some ice cream. We'll get, we'll get the kids some dessert, you know. Um, and that's your, like, you know, graduation certificate kind of thing, right? You eat the ice cream and then you leave. And then the reporter comes up to you outside the restaurant and they're like, oh, like, what would you have done differently? And then you say, I wish I could have gone to Pizza Hut buffet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and then you could have all the jello and ice cream, whatever you want, because it's a Pizza Hut buffet and they have the red and green jello. Yeah. And with like the peanut and the chocolates yeah. and, you know, you have pizza, you can, there's all sorts of pizzas there and fries. And, yeah. You no. Know, no one wants a salad, um, you know? That, I, that's kind of how I see this question. Like, I wish I could have gone to P Pizza Hut buffet. <laughs> Should everyone always go to the Pizza Hut cafe? Like their Pizza Hut cafe in life? Buffet, aunt, buffet. You know, do you not remember Pizza Hut buffets? I do, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because some people like people like different food. <laughs> you know, no, I, I totally get what you I, what you mean. Um, it's like if you didn't if if you didn't out of your own if you didn't walk there with your own two feet and went in, you know, um, because you wanted to, and it was because of other pressures, mm -hmm. then you know it's like the Hunger Games. <laughs> right there's nothing there's nothing that they can do that will make up for the fact that it wasn't your idea to come here you know? right they as in who well whatever whatever the restaurant or the you know in this case the the right the the schooling or education you know yeah but if there would be people who it 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 would have been their version of um, yeah, like, like for me, for instance, right. When I, when I went to engineering, like for me, the expectation versus reality was very different. I thought I'd be learning this sort of stuff, but I wasn't. Um, and I was very unhappy. I was like, well, I, I went in, I thought this was a pizza hot buffet. 
Um, and what I got was, you know, some lame ass, you know, salad bar or some, you know, whatever. But they were out of pizzas. Um, yeah, well, you know, like it just wasn't, the, it wasn't what I wanted, you know? Right. But uh, when I went to, when I went to design school for me, it was <laughs> like, I was, ex I was like, I was once burnt. So I was like, I was cautious. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, it'll be, it'll be good if I can just get, you know, a New York, just one slice. Right? Yeah. And then it was the Pizza Hut buffet. Right. And I got in, I was like, oh man, like this is, you know, like this, this, this is, this I, is better than what I wanted. Um, like, I mean, but the thing is like the difference between your experiences and mine, as far as university goes, is you were burnt and then you had some time off and then you went back and you're like, this is actually good. Uh, whereas for me, I was severely burned. I still got my ice cream though. Your ice cream. But graduating, oh, and then I, tried to, I remember when I tried to go to design school, I was just like a year and a half, yeah. I think a year, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not going back for second year. And you were like, what? You know, like, yeah. like anyway, I, 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 maybe, I, know, I know this taste. I know this taste, and I don't, and I know that I don't like it. Yeah, you know? that's me throwing a tantrum and leaving whatever restaurant I was taken to, kind of. I decided to go to, but I, was, I don't know. I mean, as far as like what the faculty does, I, I, um, I, I respect people in, you know, I respect educators, lecturers, tutors, teachers, all of that. And all of the admin that goes behind them putting together a tertiary education provider. I get that it's necessary, but it's just not for me. I don't, Maybe I think I think it's because I have my way of doing things and I'm incredibly stubborn. And those are not good things, right? Those are definitely not good things. But like I guess looking back on it, it's great that I went because now I have at least the standard of what goes on um, in a more professional mm. avenue of learning, mm. you know, because you could easily, I could easily be like, oh, I wish I had never gone and then just done my own thing for three years or four years or whatever. No, but, but you have to, you have to go to find out, you know, in a way. Yeah. I mean, if you don't go, you'll never know. You'll but never then, know. Yeah, if you don't go, you'll never know. But then, if you do go, you'll never you'll never get the time back. Hmm. Well, that's one thing that bothers me a lot about people is like. Here's one of my things, right? I think movement creates opportunities. Like, you can't be still and expect life to come to you and for you to figure figure shit out. Like you have to get out the door and you have to move. You have to go somewhere. You have to go somewhere. Yeah. I and mean, th that's better than staying still thinking that, you know, oh, it's not worth going outside because of this and that. I already know everything. Um, and, uh, you know. I, I think maybe, you know, it's kind of like, um, for me, going to university was going out there, going to a new place, but then getting stuck there. Mm. And that's what annoyed me because it's like, I could have gone anywhere and then I came here, like, come on, Hannah. What was, you know? what was your expectation before of what you, what you thought you might be doing at university, learning psychology and um, reality? I think I expected going and being like, I'm going to ace everything. I'm going to make a bunch of friends. Um, and then I'm going to do my master's and then I'll do a doctorate and it'll take me 10 years, but I'll do it. And at the end, I'll become a respected member of the community. That was my expectation. Day one, going in and doing that. But then I realized I don't like anybody here. I don't want to like, well, yeah, I, I don't like. feel like it was a community that you... Um, belonged or in, or wanted to not really no it, it, it was it was hard for me at the time because i like you know you're still a kid at that age you're like 18 you're still a kid like 
I don't know how 18 year olds do it, to be honest. Um, and yeah, I didn't necessarily like, I had friends and I had like social groups that I was in, but I never really like fit in. And I guess I just thought it was going to be like more. Uh, in a way, it was kind of like, you know, going from high school, which is like a relatively small pool of like kids in your class or your year or whatever. And then you're like, I'm going to go to uni and meet a whole bunch of other people. And then it was sort of, it sort of like turned out that those other people were just as shitty as the people that I was trying to <laughs> not be around kind of thing. And I, I don't know. Listen, I didn't like, I'm like this straight up. I didn't like going to university. Mm. so all of my opinions are going to be pretty jaded and really biased because my experience was go in, do the thing, get out. Mm. It's interesting being a part of that at the moment and also being part of a completely new school and having the opportunity to kind of design that environment for people at the moment with with barely any precedence like we can take precedence from our own lives and work what's worked for us and it's been really, it's been really interesting to get the feedback um from students after the semester one where 80 percent of that was covid and we we're do doing zoom classes and you know pe students weren't um in class um you know actually interacting with them one another um and they had to do group, group projects online, you know, because that was, you know, we had to, because um, that, that was part of what they want to learn. Um, but it was really interesting getting feedback because there's the design faculty, right? Um, mm -hmm. Who's doing design as a major or was the, or as like one of the main pieces of their conjoint. And I also teach um, general ed, gen ed design, mm -hmm. which is people who are not doing design, who are doing, something completely different who who's doing it as a, like an elective yeah yeah yeah. and i'm a marketing major <laughs> uh yeah and one of the is there a marketing major in one of your gen eds eh? is there a marketing major in one of your gen eds i'm sure there are probably, surely probably there's some business school people and i'm sure they take marketing no oh, yeah um the design school kids they were all on discord um, mm -hmm. And one of the feedback which kind of stood out was someone said to us, I feel like this is not school. I feel like I'm a, a part of a community rather than, you know, in a, an education system. You know? Right. Um, whereas versus the Jeanette kind of vibe was very much, it was much more difficult to engage the Jeanette kids, um, students during the COVID times, because I think their kind of um, majors were either not very well set up for COVID and not many, uh, it, it was a hard thing to do even for us. Um, and a lot of students, I felt like th they just kind of tuned out. The whole well, time. I, from their perspective, I suppose it's like, well, you know, I'm a marketing major and I have to take all these econ papers and shit. Mm -hmm. And they're all shitting on me because we have to do a whole bunch of reading, like in our like own time, like all that. Like, like I have all this shit to do for my major, and now there's this guy fucking popping up on my like school emails, just being like, "Oh, like it's Hans, your design Jeanette guy. Like, where's your fucking shit, dude?" And then I don't have time for this. But I mean, like, isn't that how people feel about electives? You're like, oh, yeah, I'll just take, like, the easiest possible elective or something that I think I might enjoy. But then you end up taking it. And you're like, this is fucking bullshit. I don't have time. I'm, I need to do my major. <laughs> this like, is way too involved. <laughs> like, yeah, like, plus COVID. Now I'm stuck at home. Damn it. Like, you know? Yeah. Um what are what are some things that you have um, you've you've learned working at Weta? Someone wanted me to ask you this question. Oh, who want who? Can I ask who? Uh, the intern. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Cool. Well, I mean, I'm in a pretty similar position as him. Like, well, 
Yeah, like in terms of like, because I'm work baby, you know? Did I tell you this? No. I'm, I'm the baby at work. I'm the one that needs constant supervision, that needs to be spoon fed information, you know? Um, and whenever I do something, it's like, am I doing it right? And they're like, yeah, you're doing okay. You, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I have the, like, out of the whole team, I have the most to gain and the least to lose. Mm. You know, so I'm in a pretty good position, I think. Yeah, no, that's you know, a legit thing, right? I it's obviously not financially. I have the least to gain and the m most to lose because if I lose this job, I have to find another one, kind of thing. Whereas, you know, I'm sure people up the more, you know, up the line than I am, they have a lot of money to gain, and if they lose this job, they can probably go find another one like pretty fucking quickly, unless, of course, they did a really bad thing. Unlikely, but anyway. Um, what have I learned so far? Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, what have I learned so far working at Weta? Um, I mean, I guess this, these are some of these, like, some of these things I already knew were like a thing, but I guess it sort of stressed the importance of, um, things like accuracy and being a tiny tiny cog in a huge fucking machine and the importance of one cog kind of thing you know um but at the same time um other than like you know not in, ter in terms of like a less like pragmatic things like the, in terms of like non-pragmatic things that i've learned from the job are um Again, these are things that I kind of already know, had known, but have been stressed to me since I started is things like communication and um, camaraderie and having a work-life balance. Yeah. Can you be more specific? about like what about communication what about camaraderie um like yeah so so this whole like you know past three months or so we've been all working from home right mm. um which is you know which has been a challenge at times but um every morning we start out with our daily meeting me and like my team and we talk about what we did the night before we talk about what we had for dinner we talk about what, what's going to happen today. And we just talk shit for like half an hour. We honestly like talk shit for half an hour, get some work stuff like, you know, ironed out and then we go about our day. And then at the end of the day, we have the same meeting where we go over what we have done today. And then we just talk shit for another half an hour. And it's so good because it's like, you know, like, um, it's really hard to get to know people online. Um, especially when there are people from work which you're not choosing to get to know in a way. Um, but I think we've done a like, really good job at that. Like when we first, so like I joined this team um, around late February, March kind of thing. And then COVID had mid March. And then so we had to start working from home. So on my first day working from home, I'm just like, like, I want to ask these questions, but like, I really don't feel comfortable because I don't want them to think I'm an idiot. Um, and I've honestly never talked to them before. So I'd always go back to my old team and be like, Hey, how do I do this? Like, can you help me with this? And then after, and, and now I'm just like straight up like, Hey, like, I think I'm fucking this up, like to my team. And they're like, you're not fucking anything up, Hannah. Uh, but anyway, things like that, you know, um, being comfortable talking to, like, again, maybe I'm just a bitch, Hans. Maybe I'm just a bitch and I don't like people. Um, no, no, no. I think that's like, because that's what I've been trying to understand with so many, like, teams that I work with, right? There's teams where you feel like you can just be like, yo, I fucked up. Can you come help? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And there's teams where you where the boss says like, hey, the, my door is always open. Just come talk to me at any time, ask any questions. Like they can say that mm -hmm. and they can mean it while they say it. 
but that doesn't always translate into an environment where you feel where people actually actually do um, do that and communicate in that way. Right. And it always seems like it comes down to the little things that kind of add up to give someone a feeling of, you know, safety and like feeling of, oh, I can be myself here. Right. I think a part of that for me was uh, something that really helped, especially like, okay, listen, like, cause I, you know, in real life, I'll be like trying to like throw in jokes whenever I can, but online it's really hard because a, you can't carry the tone of your voice and like the inflections of a sentence online. It just types out and they see what exactly what you type out. So it's really hard to make a good joke online kind of thing, you know? Um, especially if you don't know them well. But I think it's really helped um, in the way of emojis. I'm not even kidding. Like, this is gonna, this might sound quite stupid, but like, you know, for instance, like today, <laughs> oh my goodness, today I asked a question, I was just like, blah, 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 like, blah, 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 what do you guys think? Question mark, brackets. Only emoji responses accepted. <laughs> Close brackets. And like the responses were really good. And like, you know, it's kind of like having the freedom of like just putting it out there and just being like, what do you guys think? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know if you care. Like, it's cool if you don't, but like, what the fuck? Does that mean, is this, is any of this making sense? I don't, I'm trying to think of your question and trying to like put my answer to it, but I'm not really sure if this is what you're asking kind of thing, no, you know? really good. Like, I, uh, I mean, yeah, what kind like of responses that you get, huh? What kind um, of responses like a monkey making like a snow angel, and then the other one was the emoji that was like, <laughs> which is like, call me. And I was just like, fuck, am I supposed to call him right now? Does he really want me to call him? Like, because this is like, this is something like he might want me to call me about, but it doesn't seem necessary, and he. Like later on, someone was like, why did you, did you, Hannah, did you call it? And I was like, no, I, I, I didn't call. Do you want me to call you, dude? And he was all like, oh, no, it was me like hanging, hang loose, bro. I was just like, of course it was. Um, anyway, and one of them was like a dancing turkey and stuff. Like it, it was weird. Um, so like that's some shit that you would definitely not try on your first day of work, right? This is some shit I would not try on the first day of work. And like, you know. People you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you know, um, first day working from home, I was like, fuck, like, put on a face, put on like a nice button up. Oh, yeah, Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for my video chats. Like, at the moment, I'm literally, do you know, do you want to see how I'm walking into meetings? This is how I walk into meetings with my hoodie like this. Yeah. With my ears out yeah. like this. Like me, like this is me and my producer. We both wear our hoods like this with our headphones on yeah. like this and our glasses on. And we're just like, hey guys, like what's up? And like both eating like cookies and like measly bars and shit just in <laughs> meetings. Like, you know, and like, you know, of course, like when we go back to work, it's not really going to be the same. So I'm, I'm kind of going to miss working from home, to be honest with you, because it's nice to just like work unsupervised. Yeah. <laughs> um, now I, I know I know you're a big big uh, jokey jokester person. <laughs> <laughs> jokey big <Mick> jokester. <laughs> um, I have two questions. I'll ask them in a random order, which my brain will come up with. Um, one is one is can you share a a, a joke story like a oh, joke. Oh, yeah, yeah, of a time when you, when you, uh, when I was a joke, no, yeah, well, that too. <laughs> I'm a joke of, of a time where a, a joke went, uh, really well at work, you know, like a joke or like, you know, um, a thing that you did at work, yeah, like one of those legend, like, do you have like a legendary list of like a time where something just like something really? stupid worked? It Brain to this at work yeah like i remember you telling me a story about like you drawing stuff on whiteboards or something in different meeting rooms 
Um, oh yeah, I mean, but that's kind of like a running gag, you know, the, the skate or cry thing. Oh no, not that one. What? But um, yeah, you're telling me about a time. Well, not about a time, but you do something in all these meeting rooms. I can't remember what it was. Um, and then you leave little um, clues or something. Clues? Well, it doesn't have to be that story, but. I'm trying to remember what story this is. Clues? For what? I mean, I do draw on whiteboards. Every room I go into, if there's a whiteboard and no one's like looking at me, I'll draw something on it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, I haven't been, I haven't gotten the chance to make a lot of jokes recently mm. because of the current working situation. What do you get out of cracking jokes at work? Why is it so important? Like not important, but why do you do it? It is important. First of all, making jokes at work is incredibly important, at least for me anyway, because a, it's kind of like, Hey, workmates that I wouldn't otherwise spend time with in my life outside of this um this is a part of me that i'm sharing with you because i want to make your day brighter so from the get-go it's kind of like i like you know i'm having a great time in my mind i want you to have a great time outside of my mind you know um and i think that's really important because working in a monotonous environment is not for everybody and it's not for me and i mean if you have something like that brings you joy you should share it right regard like i mean of course unless it's like at like a really inappropriate moment like you know at like a like a big meeting when you're not meant to be talking at all or you know with a client <laughs> um or when you haven't done your work and you just try to make jokes. <laughs> jokes as a cover up. Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> hey, yeah. There is a there was some oh my goodness. Um not legendary, but like my my two most recent jokes actually was we had this client call, right? And the client side producer was like we were going over footage and he would like every time there was like an explosion or something happening, he would make the sound effects himself. And um, in like our private chat for our like our our side of things, I was like, oh my goodness, I want him, I want to make like a cut of this movie with only his sound effects. That's what I want. Like I don't actually, I don't want to see the actual movie. I just want him to like like through the whole thing and just watch that the full cut. I don't care the full cut. I want him to do it all. You know? Yeah. And I and I got a lot of um, a lot of like laugh reacts in the chat, you know. Nice. Um, and then it's like shit, like you know, um, a couple of days ago, I think it was Monday, Monday maybe Tuesday. Um, you might have heard, but Wellington canceled a bunch of flights, inbound flights. Know about this. So because it was super foggy, you know how Wellington gets super foggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know where I live in, like live up in Brooklyn, out my bedroom window, we I couldn't see anything. Yeah, it was straight up fog and then so later on in the day we were like in a meeting and we were like oh yeah like the fog was like crazy yeah because you know everyone talks about the weather and all that and so oh yeah the weather's been crazy like look at all this fog like blah 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 and some people are like oh actually i got a chance to go out on a walk at lunchtime and then i took some cool pictures of the fog um oh yeah i took some pictures of fog, yeah. and then so everyone's uploading pictures of fog on the group chat right yeah <laughs> i thought it would be pretty funny to post a picture of uh, you know the game uh, you know the game silent hill with the guy, the pyramid head, and the and the big sword. No, but go on. Oh, I'll show you. I'll just show you. This is the funniest shit. I thought it was real funny. Okay. Um, <laughs> like my work chats get pretty freaking rambunctious. I think so. Anyway, I've I recently started saying aloha instead of hello. <laughs> so I'll be like, aloha team. Blah 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 blah. Aloha, Hannah. <laughs> I'm funny. Uh, I think I'm funny. Was it an acid dailies? More. No. Chat. 
And I always like to, oh, okay, this is a classic. This is a classic Hannah moment. Can you see? I actually can't see it, just the white oh, square. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see uh, some golem type guy, a bold guy. Can you see? Go back. No, it's too hard. It's too hard. Oh, uh, send me the picture. I'll upload it. It's so it. good. It's so good. Oh, my God. I make some good fucking jokes at work, man. Honestly. Or was it at rounds? Maybe it was at rounds. Jokes, 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 jokes. I, I'm a big jokey McJokerson. Um, can I... Uh, since I know that you have some... <laughs> well, Sorry. Okay, can you, I don't know if you can see. Okay, so these people are uploading pictures of fog, right? Yeah. You see that? Yeah, I see that. Fog, like that's that's straight up a picture of just yeah. fog. And then there's me. Can you see the man in that photo? Is there like a shadow in that photo? Yeah. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see some shadow. And he, yeah, it's a guy holding a big fucking knife. Oh. <laughs> it's from a game. It's from a game called Silent Hill. It's a horror game. It's a horror story game. But anyway, like, it's just... That's funny. <laughs> like, I, I don't, like, I mean... What do you get out of it? What, what do I get out of it? I get to make people smile. How does it make you feel when, when people do... It makes me feel, I mean, okay, listen, it took me, okay, I, like, someone asked me quite recently, like, you know, what do you think your purpose in life is, you know? I think it was meant to be, like, one of those, like, deep um, questions about, like, the meaning of life and shit, and then I was just like, I think my purpose in life, I think I was put on this earth to make people laugh, like, fuck, if not by, if not in the way of, like, me cracking jokes or me doing like, or me, like, you know, doing, like, sight gags and stuff like that, or me just doing, like, me just memeing out hard. Um, if not in the way of what I do intentionally, then in the way of, like, I'm the joke. Laugh at me, you know? I, yeah, I think that's why I've been put on this earth somehow. How, and how, how does it make you feel when you, when you do... Uh when you do make people smile. Oh man, it's great. It's like the best thing, you know? There's the like, feeling. it's it's like a immediate, what well, it's like, it's like instant gratification for what I've chosen to let out of my mouth, right? Hmm. And if it's so funny that they can't help but smile, like how good is that, you know? It's, it's, it's like the same, it's like the same as like a chef making like an amazing meal mm. and it getting to the table and the, you know, diner eats it and they're like, this is the best thing I've ever had. You know, it's the same kind of feeling, right? Except you can't tell if someone thinks the food in their mouth tastes good immediately. Whereas if you'd crack a joke and someone smiles and someone laughs immediately, you're like, that was a good joke. I, I know this. Mm. That's, that's a receipt right there. You know, I, I, I want I, I want to press you a little bit on it. So, like, but what is that feeling? Do you feel happy? Do you feel some kind of uh, uh, like some kind of joy? You feel some kind of um, uh, ah, I'm alive and this is me and people on people get me. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's definitely those things. I actually no good point. Yeah, it's like you, people get me. Like I'm finally saying things like you know that makes sense in someone else's brain, and I've made them think it. You know, like this is my product mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I suppose like you know, as a designer yourself, you want to design things that achieve its purpose and at the same time possibly look good, right? Mm. I mean, I already look good. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, see, like uh, that's a that's a pretty great joke. Like, <laughs> I got one last request. Request, um, oh, if, okay. if you have the time. I'm not singing. No, no, no. 
I was wondering if you if you could share one of your stories from your trip travels. Oh, one of those. Um, okay. So I was catching a flight from <laughs> uh, this is this is a story where a joke doesn't go well. Huh? This, this is a story where a joke doesn't go well, but I still pull through. Listen, okay, so I'm in LAX. I, I'm in LA. I, I have a flight to New York, so LAX to JFK, and I don't I don't want to be late. And I know how long it takes to, um, like, and I knew exactly how long it was going to take to LAX, like, from where I was staying at the time, because this, the last time I had to get from where I was staying, the same place, to LAX, I almost missed my flight back to New Zealand, and that would have really fucked me over. So I was pretty paranoid. So I was like, all right, going to get to the airport. I'm going to get to the airport pretty early. Okay. Got to the airport. I'm like, okay, cool. I've got two hours until my flight, until a domestic flight. Um, check in, all that shit. I'm like carrying my bag and I go and I like suss out my gate lounge. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm at my gate lounge. An hour and a half to go. An hour and a half to go before my flight. All right, cool, cool, cool. Heaps of time, heaps of time, heaps of time. And then I get bored enough to go to the nearest bar, right? So I pull up at the bar. And the barkeep is all like, oh, hey there, like, what would you like? And I was just like, you know what? It's pretty early in the day. I'll have a Bloody Mary, please. And he goes, a double? And I said, yeah, sure, I'll have a double. And the thing is, in New Zealand, a double is 30 mils, which is one ounce. Whereas in America, a double is 60 mils. No. <laughs> which is, you know, as you can guess, two ounces. And as he was making it, I was just like, oh, Damn it! I forgot that. Like, I forgot a double is is like you know double the amount of alcohol that I originally wanted. Like fuck! I mean, I'm I, I'm he's already making it, so I'm still gonna have it. So I pay for it. He brings it over, and I like start on having this bloody mary at like fucking like ten o'clock in the morning or some shit at an airport. Hour to go before my flight. Cool, 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 cool. So I'm like having this drink, and then this guy sits down next to me, and he like turns towards me, and I'm like. Uh, and he's like, hey, you're waiting for a flight. And I was like, I don't know. What were you here for? Are you not waiting for a flight? What are you <laughs> waiting for? Like, Jesus Christ. And he was like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for it. Where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm going to New York. And he's like, I'm like where are you going? He's like, oh, I'm going to go to Maryland. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, and he was like dressed in like, because like Navy uniform, like I or marine or whatever and i was just like oh and, and, okay cool that's cool and he was just like yeah yeah and then so we're like talking for ages um and you know he's like you know where are you from that classic conversation where you follow like, up from new zealand oh no i was born in australia oh my parents are free and all that jazz all over again you know every new person i meet that's oh where'd you get your accent i watched a lot of tv like uh. anyway so we're like yarning and then I like, you know, eventually finish my drink and the bartender comes up. He's like, same again. And I didn't want to lose face to this like guy that I was talking to. So I was like, yeah, same again, please. And off he goes, makes like a Bloody Mary with, with oh. two bloody shots in it. And I'm just like, oh my God, by the end of this drink, I had four shots of vodka within the space of an hour. I'm going to be cooked as great. So... Anyway, I don't want to lose face. So I'm like, yeah, same again, dude. Ha ha ha. And I'm like smashing down my second drink. And this other guy is like, oh yeah, talking to me, blah, blah, blah. And then I finish it and I look at my clock and I'm like, oh shit, like I got to get to my flight. I've got 15 minutes left. I should probably get to my gate before I forget because I don't want to lose this flight. He's like, yeah, yeah, all right, cool. Um, you know, like, and then he was like, oh, like, do you, do you like, like, you know, can I have your details? Like, maybe you're going to hit me up. And I was like, oh, like, I'm, I'm not really here for a long time. He was like, oh, you're here for a good time. I was just like, also, no, but uh, whatever. Anyway, we add each other on Instagram. I'm off to my flight. I get to the gate. I sit down. I'm so cooked at this stage. I'm so cooked. I sit down. And then a guy sits down next to me, right? But this time, it's a man in uniform, but it's a man in a pilot uniform right and it's an old dude as well and i look over and i was just like 
and, and I looked over and I was like, oh yeah, okay, this guy's a pilot. Okay, Hannah, like I'm listening to music at the stage, by the way. And I'm like, oh God, I'm so cooked. Like, I don't know how I'm going to be on this flight because I'm like, I have a pretty low tolerance, right? So I'm there listening to my music and I like, looked over to this guy and he's missing a finger. He's missing a finger. And then I couldn't help myself. So I take my headphones out and I'm like, hey. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, are you a pilot? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. How long have you been a pilot for? Oh, you know, like quite some time. And I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. And then I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. Hey, how did you lose your finger? And turns out this guy lost it in like some weird like um, carpenting accident when he was using like a circular saw and i'm just like oh okay cool i sure hope you're not flying my plane (laughs) and then he's like where are you going and i said jfk he's like well i'm afraid i am flying your plane miss and then he just like whips his fucking newspaper up and i'm just like (laughs) i'm like okay put my headphone back in so i like sat there this is in complete silence And this guy's mad at me. (laughs) And then next thing I remember, I get a shake on my knee and it's a woman, not, and she's not an employee of any of the, you know, carriers or anything. She's not an airport person. It's just the lady. It was just some person shakes my knee. She's like, Hey, are you getting on this flight to New York? Because they're about to go. And I was like, fucking that bastard didn't wake me up. He knew I was on this plane and he didn't wake me up. So I get off the plane and I stared into the fucking cockpit. Yeah. And he, he like, you know, by chance turns around. I'm like. (laughs) And then I sat down and then I smashed a couple of Valiums and I slept for the rest of the flight. And that's how I got to New York. Shamefully. Uh. (laughs) <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> what was what was the what did you learn from this experience and how 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 has this impacted your life <laughs> um when you're in america they ask you if you want a double do not get a double that's lesson number one lesson number two don't try to look too cool because then you'll be served another double bloody mary and you'll be way too cooked and then number three don't joke about who's gonna fly your plane to the guy who's gonna fly your plane like just don't (laughs) just don't oh my god oh yeah ah crap i remember the line that i normally keep in the story because one of the other jokes i made to this fucking pilot was (laughs) Uh, so like he fucking told me about his finger and I was just like oh yeah does it affect your ability to fly at all (laughs) (laughs) I don't know I'm like and and this is what I was saying before like if you don't want to laugh at my jokes at least you can laugh at me (laughs) right like (laughs) god damn it (laughs) I, I, I like I like how there's no safety net there. Oh, ah, yeah, I could have easily just missed my flight. <laughs> Was it would could it could have been the first Bloody Mary, the second Bloody Mary? Could have just straight up missed my flight. Oh no, man. No, I, I meant that like I, I like that you risk in your joke. There is an element of risk of it. Like, I don't know. Do do you think this is right? Like uh the best jokes. Uh the best jokes always risk failure. I mean, you got to push the envelope a little bit when you're joking because you are essentially presenting verbally, at least, you know, if it's a joke said out loud, you're presenting something that you don't think the other person has thought before, mm. you know? Because obviously, if you've thought that, like if they've thought it before, then it's either going to be a, like a shit joke or well, they've already the thought about it. So, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, if, they've, if they've thought about this, they would have thought about a funnier joke right now, surely, right? You know? 
So you always got to be pushing the envelope a little bit. And, you know, you can't expect, like, you can't expect things to be funny if there's not a lot of risk. That's why some things are just, uh, it's, it's, it's how it be sometimes. Sometimes it do be like that, you know? And, you know, when, like, if, if someone says a risky joke, it's like, everyone's like, ooh, like, I found it funny, but, like, I don't know if it's appropriate to laugh right now. Like, I like those because it makes you question your sense of, um, like, political correctness or, like, your own morality because it's like, should I have laughed at that shit? Because I'm laughing in my mind, but nobody else is laughing like out loud. Like, Ooh. yeah. I think I'll, I, I'm thinking of Dave Dave Chappelle as you're saying this. Dave Chappelle, oh, yeah. Old mate. Mm. But Hannah, thanks so much. Mm. Like, I think we all like you um, for being that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, if thanks, you thanks for being you. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to. I I'm looking forward to your. Um, your your the plaque that you're designing for for this pop podcast. Um, the Q. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke. That that was a reference to a joke when we were about to fly to Korea at an airport. That's that's oh an God. end joke. I won't explain. Maybe next time. Everyone, yeah, yeah. Um, Club members. Yeah, so may, maybe maybe the illustration will be out by the time that this this airs, but. Thanks so much for, oh, good God. for your uh, <sighs> stories and your your wisdom. <laughs> oh, no worries. Looking forward, to, looking forward to what you do, what you get up to next. Jesus, well, thank you for having me on here. I'm not really sure if I'm going to provide much insight to anything at all, um, but you know, you asked for it. I delivered. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey. All right. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>